want to share. For those that's on Facebook or if you have any internet access, Pastor Tony put out a blog this week called Christianity Is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's doggone awesome. <laughs> it's awesome to be up under a ministry, um, up under the guidance and, and just being on, on board and on team with, with the man that truly gets this thing, this walk with Christ. Um, it's, it's not about it's not about anything. If you read the blog, I want you to read it. I want you to find, figure out how to go get it. If you can't figure it out, I can help you. Because you need to read it. It's some good stuff, and it just it, you know it's. If you read it, you will you will be like, I know why I'm at Transformation House because this this visionary and um and this pastor, this lead pastor, truly gets Christ, and it's so easy to come up and introduce him on this morning. And it's so easy to come every Sunday um, to this place that, that live out that vision. So, we're going to get right on into the Word. Pastor Tony, if you would come forward, and everyone give him a hand as he does so. I brought my prop. I'm going to drink out of it, though. <laughs> okay, well, um, Christianity is... <laughs> The, the blog was was kind of written a little bit out of frustration, so maybe that's what you know makes it so understandable because <laughs> we all feel that sometimes. Um, I, I I understand that there are lots of people who don't get it, who have a different view of what Christianity is and who Jesus is, and I'm just so tired of that. I mean, really. Tired of people who keep having to live with under the heaviness of Christianity. Right. When Jesus called us to freedom, right. um, I mean, the word says it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. It wasn't to put us back under bondage or to give us a hard, heavy, burdensome life, but is to bring us into freedom. And man, this has been a week. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you've experienced this week. Maybe you've been on cloud nine all week and you've had a great time. And I'm really glad we can switch places if you want. <laughs> um, but it's really been, this week has been really strange. I mean, even from last Sunday. I mean, I, I you'll know that I'm, I'm online, I'm on Facebook and whatever other social media thing there is out there. I'm on it and... You know, I try to stay connected, and, and I love, I love it. I love being connected to people. I love being able to connect. I mean, I, I'm, every place I've ever been in my life, and I travel a lot, but every time I've been with a group of people, there's somebody from that group that I'm connected to, again, now reconnected to on Facebook, even from elementary school. Crazy. But, um, but I also hate it. You know why I hate it? Because for some reason, people feel like there's a need to bring out their ignorance and their stupidity for the world to see. You know what I'm talking about? Do, do, you, do you read that? Do you read those kind of things? I mean, like, serious. Um, so I had, especially when some event comes up, and, and let's just talk about it, okay? Um, last Sunday, um, the, the man that I call my pastor made an announcement in his church um, at Redemption World Outreach Center. Ron Carpenter made an announcement at his church. And if you don't know about it, I'm not telling you about it. You can go look, watch the video from last Sunday if you want to. But it stirred up a whole conversation. Um, and everybody who had ever been hurt or wounded or felt bad or had a bad opinion came out of the woodwork to be negative about that. Fortunately, I didn't see all those people. I only saw you know, like three or four of them on Facebook that made comments that were really um, not Christ-like. Um, and I don't mind telling you, they're not my Facebook friends anymore. I don't care if they were relatives or if they knew, were people I knew for 50 years, they are off my list. And it's not because I want to break relationship with them, it's because I listened to what Pastor Chris had to say last week and the week before. And what Amber had to say to us last week when the, with the question and answer times, you, you get the gift of goodbye, use it. 
Um, there's just a time. I, I don't have time to listen to all that mess to, to hear their negativity when, in my opinion, what people who are believers should be doing right now for the Carpenter family is praying for them. And unless you lived in their house for the last 10 years, unless you lived in the house with them for the last 10 years, you might have an opinion, but it probably won't. Whether you're for or against or whatever your opinion is, you're, you probably you do not know all the circumstance, so your opinion means this. Um, so, see, I told you I was frustrated. <laughs> And then um, you, you may have seen that there's a particular magazine that I have issues with, and I don't mean subscription to their issues, I mean <laughs> I have <laughs> issues. Um, and uh, before Sunday was over, they had printed an article about it. And they're not negative toward him. They're, they're not negative articles necessarily. Um, but then by Tuesday, there were four articles that they had printed. In two days. Uh, what magazine does that? I mean, who sits around with that much time to write or uh, Anyway. And then my issue with that is that they allow comments at the end of their articles. And then that's where all the stupid people show up. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's obvious that these, there are people who have held a grudge for a while or they have some negative opinion, and, and they've had it for a while, and they're holding on to it, and now here's my chance to just throw it out for the world, like it matters now. Right. Um, no, now is the time that, that we should be spending time before our Father on behalf of our brothers and sisters and, and lifting them up in prayer. So, so all of that, and then, oh my goodness, there, that, that wasn't all that happened this week. I told you it was a crazy week. There's another pastor. I'll just tell you his name. His name is John MacArthur. Anybody heard of him? He's written a billion books. He's a very well-known pastor. Um, he, very, very, very well-known pastor. Well, he had a, he's written a new book called Strange Fire. And he had a conference this week to go along to promote his new book. And his, new, his conference was called Strange Fire. Well, the premise of his book and his conference was to tell the whole world that um, how wrong all the Charismatics and Pentecostals are. Now, I grew up in a Pentecostal church. My entire life, I've seen everything that can be seen in a Pentecostal church, trust me. If it... If it or a hairpiece, I've seen it. If it, I mean, whatever. It, it, the strangest things. Weirdest thing. Now, fortunately, Darnell, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I have not seen the snakes in person. I can remember when I was a kid driving by this little church that, I mean, it was a tiny little cinder block building, like with trees and stuff all, you know, like. It's scary looking. And I can remember my dad telling me that that was a church that did the snake thing. Um, but but that, wasn't a, that wasn't right here in our immediate area. That was in another county somewhere. And, but, but I know about it. But all the other strange... And, and trust me, I, there's stuff that, that I see in Pentecostal charismatic churches and I'm looking and I'm saying, that is not God. I didn't have a thing in the world to do with that. But I can also look at the Baptists and the Presbyterian churches and say the same thing. I, there, there's stuff going on in there that is not. Well, the, the, okay, I'm not going to linger on all this, but the problem with John MacArthur's book and his conference is that he said anybody who teaches a Pentecostal charismatic doctrine at all or belongs to those churches, not, you can look this up to verify this, um, not only are they in error, but they are of the devil, and the devil is using them, and none of them are really Christians. So there's 600 million people in the world who are misled. Are in church every week, and and he has now assigned them to hell. Right. Because I guess he has some inside scoop. I don't. Know. Anyway, that was another thing that happened this week that was just. Just weird. Just yes, very weird. 
So, so I'm here to tell you that I don't agree with him. I, I do not agree with him a lot of times, but I really don't agree with him this time. Um, let's see, what else happened this week? Was that strange enough? Um, oh, there were good things that happened. Monday I went to an honor event. It was a, an event that was um, held for pastors and ministry leaders in, in Greenville. It happened, they, they have these all over the country. This one actually was here, so it was close. People came from all around to, to go to it. There were about 80 people there who attended. And it was very honoring. Um, I got to share the Transformation House story. and It was a good time to just to spend with... It, it wasn't, wasn't a lot to it. It was just, tell us, tell us who you are and let us pray for you. And um, so that, that was great. And then later in the week, I met with the guy who puts that event on, and he's doing, he's planning some newer, different kinds of events, and he was asking my opinion about some things, and so we're working on some other things that are coming up. Uh, but in the process of talking to him on Thursday, um, he asked about Chris, and he asked about Amber, and, and he, he told me that he'd been watching our videos and, um, and he said, I'm, I really, he said, you're way more hip than I am. I'm not in those same circles. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm hip. Y'all yeah. yeah, know it. But anyway, <laughs> he, 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 said, he said, I don't know who that singer was that Amber was talking about last night. So he really did watch the video because he knew about King Michelle. <laughs> So I'm just telling you that on Thursday in the coffee shop, in Traveler's Rest, there are two ministers sitting having a conversation about Kay Michelle. Kay Michelle. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you can pass that on to her, your friend. Gotta get that word out there. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not recommending her music. I, Amber loves no, it. I, I don't I'm, even. I'm, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm not asking you to listen to it. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, please don't. You know, if... if you know what makes that so weird is because where whatever your week's been like, you have the same things that happen to you. You hear voices, and they're all you know. You carry them with you all week. There, there's this voice over here and this voice over here. This one's telling you you're going to hell, and this one over here saying you're the hippest pastor. No, you probably don't hear that voice. But um, you're, the, you're the, the coolest things that sliced bread. And, you know, you hear all the positive and negative. You get the flattery, the praise. You get the cut downs. You, yeah. Hopefully you get more praise than, than bad news. But I, I know we live in a real world, and I understand that most of the time what we hear is more negative than positive. And we carry all that stuff with us. And today we're talking about relationships. We're continuing in our, our series, Survivor. And we're talking about the principles of relationships from the book of Proverbs. Um, and Chris and Amber have done a great job the last two weeks kicking this off and, and really helping us, especially the question and answer times. Goodness, I mean, they've both done great with the teaching, but the question and answer times, I think, have, have really been helpful and um, just really good job. Today's title is The Tribe Has Spoken. Um, you know Survivor. If you've watched Survivor at all, you know what that means when the tribe speaks. Um, and a lot of times, man, that's true for us. We, we listen to what everybody around us says so much. And well, let's look at the scripture. The scriptures that we're looking at in this series are from from Proverbs 25, 26, and 27. Um, let me read the verse to you from Proverbs 27. Verse 21 says, The crucible is for silver and the furnace for gold, but people are tested by praise. Um, the message says, The purity of silver and gold is tested by putting them in the fire. Okay, listen to this. This, this is from the message. The purity of silver and gold is tested by putting them in the fire. The purity of a human heart is tested by giving it a little praise. 
you know, okay, now let's compare these. What Solomon, the wisest man ever lived, he, he says this, you can compare when you get a little praise, compare that to a fire that you would put gold or silver in. Because what comes out of the fire uh -oh. is what's really there. The real stuff is what's still there once the fire has burned. So you put, you put, you know, the, you pour the gold or from its natural state into a mold and you put it into a fire and all the junk, all the junk burns out and what you're left with is the purity. So, the human heart, when we give you a little praise, when somebody says you're just the coolest thing ever, um, when you hear that, what comes out of that? This is a fire to test you. It's going to see what you're really made of. The real you is going to show up after the praise. Now, is it going to your head? Are you going to, is the pride of your life what survives the fire? Or is there humility that comes from that? Um, let, me, let me just say this for all of us, because you know what my week's been like. You're a fool if you believe and accept every positive word that somebody says to you. Or if you reject every negative word that somebody says to you. Because sometimes the positive words are just flattery. And there's a hidden agenda. Somebody's got something in their mind that how can I manipulate you to get you to do what I want you to do or be who I want you to be. Well, I'm going to, I can, I can just flower you with praise. I can let it just... And man, we are so starved for a positive word that we'll just take anything that anybody says. It's like the scripture that Amber read to us. I mean, to somebody who is starving, even what is bitter tastes sweet. Um, and, and we'll take anything because we just, we're needy. We, we need. And so we'll accept flattery and we'll take it as the truth when it's not really the truth. It's just the way somebody wants to use you. Um, verse 6 in this chapter, in chapter 27, says, The wounds from a friend can be trusted. Now, this one's hard. Yeah. <laughs> The wounds from a friend can be trusted. But an enemy, in, in the NIV it says this, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Let me read that from the message too. The wounds from a lover or friend are worth it. But kisses from an enemy do you in. Okay, now let's break this one down. The wounds from a friend can be trusted or are worth it. Now this is talking about a real friend, wow. not the person that is your Facebook acquaintance that you call friend, or yeah. your cousin that can't really stand you, but you know they're all smiles at the family reunion, right. yeah. um, <laughs> or calls you at midnight, <laughs> or <laughs> whatever. Um, see, I've been paying attention. Um, <laughs> The real friend, the person who really has your back, when they speak a word that hurts, when they speak a word that kind of digs, it's a negative thing, it says you can trust that. You should take advantage of that. Listen to those words. Don't expect your friend, well, this is what we do, we'll, we'll cut them off if it's not always positive, positive, positive about us. You just don't want to have anything to do with them when it may be that that person really is in your life to help you. God has put that person right in your life to show you, man, this thing that hurts so bad, it hurts so bad because I need to fix something. So it doesn't hurt so bad anymore. And that wound that they inflicted on me was worth it. Once I find out what the truth is and really apply in my life, in, in my actions, in my beliefs, the way I think, when I apply this, what they're telling me is going to change my life. Man, wouldn't that be worth it? Yeah. To be put on a, on a, in a better place 
um, because of something negative that, that a friend said to you. But the opposite of that, because these are proverbs, and some of, most of these proverbs are like, here's the positive and here's the negative. <laughs> Um, the negative part of that is, but an enemy multiplies kisses, or kisses from an enemy will do you in. Yeah. That's the flattery part. Yeah. The schmoozing from somebody that doesn't really, is not really your friend. Yeah. I, I suspect we probably all can relate to that. Um, some people... Some people put themselves in a place in your life that you didn't give them. They assume a role that you didn't open up to them. Um, I've had some of those in my life, a time or two here and there. Um, and because, I know Chris, you don't have this personality, but because, you know, I want to make everybody happy and, um, <laughs> and I want everybody to like me and I want everybody to get along, then I put up with that way more than I should. I, I will listen to what they have to say and I'll be friendly and smile and, and whatever until it gets to a point, and I've, I've noticed that in every one of those relationships, that point's going to come up sooner or later. You're going to get to that point where that, that person, true, the person's true motives start showing. Their hidden agenda comes out. Their ulterior motive is right there on the surface. All of a sudden, there it is. And now you're stuck. Because you've allowed them into a place in your life that they don't deserve. And you've given them too close attention or you've let them come in too deep close. into your heart where they don't belong. Right. And now... you got to cut them loose. Exactly. <laughs> and now it's going to hurt worse. Yes. And now there's going to be all these other ripple effects because you didn't do it earlier. Yes. All right. So I think Amber told us last week, nip it in the bud. In other words, in different yes. words, but I think she said what you got to do is nip it in the butt. So when those kind of people come along, and the earlier that you can end that, just cut it loose and go, walk away, whatever you have to do, the better. Yes. Then you don't have the larger ripple effect, and you don't have the repercussions in your own life where it where it hurts you, um, because. Listen, if, if, they're, if they're not really your friend, it's not going to hurt them. Right. It's going to hurt you to keep them. It's not going to hurt them. You're worried about how they're going to feel if you walk away, and it's not going to bother them at all. You're wasting your time trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Right. So, so I guess the question to ask is, is this person a, a friend or a foe? Um, are, are their words true, or are they just flattery? Um, and then we have those people who, who when they come into our life and they cause damage, they've hurt us for some reason, and then they walk away, or we end the relationship, whatever happens, it ends, and we walk away, and then we are still carrying all that hurt, yeah. all the pain from that relationship, the stuff that they inflicted on us or the expectations that we put on them that weren't realistic or whatever, they caused hurt in our life for some reason and then you got to live the rest of your life and, and you're dragging all this stuff with you. Um, I, I, I just want to talk about that for a second before we do our, our game and get to questions and answers because it's... It's, it's really damaging you. The relationship is over, or if it's not over, it should be. I, I think there are a couple of questions you should ask. I think you should ask, can this relationship be reconciled? Is this something that can be fixed? Do I want to? Is this something that should be fixed according to 
according to the Bible, what the Bible says about my relationship with other people, do I need to fix this relationship, or can I just let it go? Um, and then the other thing, can it be reconciled, is can it be redeemed? And there's a difference. Reconciling means that you come back together with that person, and, and we're going to have a friendship, and we're going to fix this, and work on the relationship, and, and move forward. Heal the hurt through, but love healed the hurt. Then the, but then the redemption, can it be redeemed? Is there some way that I can be completely separated from this person? I can look at the pain, I can look at the hurt that this relationship caused me, but let God redeem that situation and use it. Is there something that can happen that the pain I've experienced isn't wasted? Because that would be horrible. To experience pain... And then it's for nothing. Right. You go through your life just carrying it, and, and it, there's nothing that ever happens. Um, I, I think, first of all, it's, it's important not to put a price on the other person's head. Ever, not one penny. Not ever have an expe expectation they're going to pay for what they did. Because that's not your job. If that's, if that's your heart, if that's the attitude of your heart toward the other person then you're the one who suffers for that. Because you're never going to see the penny paid or the million dollars or whatever you think your pain is worth. You're never going to see that happen. And I promise you, if it's, if it's, if it happened through criminal activity and you went to court and the jury found the other person guilty and awarded you a money amount and you got Five hundred million dollars because of all your pain and suffering. The pain and suffering wouldn't go away because you got five hundred million dollars. That's right. You could have all the money, and it would not take the pain and hurt away. It would still be there. <coughs> so for you to put a price on the person's head that isn't money, but whatever, I'm going to see that that person pays for this. That's still only hurting you and causing you to carry that pain around. So. So the question is, okay, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to ex, expect revenge because I belong to Jesus. You know what happens when I belong to him? He will get revenge for me. He will take care of the other person. Revenge might not be the right word. But he will take care of the other person in the right way. When, when my motives are already messed up because I'm hurt and I'm acting out of hurt toward that person, I'm having feelings toward them because I'm hurt, not righteous thoughts, and I'm okay with that. N yeah, you're human. That's what that's called. Um, but, but God can take care of it in a supernatural, in His way, to where the other person is treated as God sees they need to be treated, and you're treated the way God sees you need to be treated. And how often... As much mercy as we've received, we still don't want to give mercy to somebody else. So, um, I, think, I think this is something that we really, really, this is one thing that we really need to make a matter of prayer. God, help me release this. Yes. Help me let go of this. And then show me, what, what can I do to redeem this? What can I do, how can I use this? before it uses me, because one of them is going to happen. Either your hurt will use you, or you can use it first. Mm -hmm. So this, this is what I'm saying. You need to find a way to use it before it uses you. So if you can take that, that hurt, that wound, and help somebody else who's going through the same thing, maybe, maybe that's the way. Maybe you can write a book. Maybe, I, I don't know. God's pretty creative, and so are most of you. So I think there are ways that you can find to redeem that, and in working through that experience of using the pain and the hurt, you'll find that it is released. You can let it go, and it'll be gone. Proverbs 25, 21, and 22 says, If your enemy's hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, now, yes, let's do that. Um, my enemy's hungry, so let me feed him. It's, it's, I'm just reading the Bible. It's not me. I'm just telling you what God said here. If your enemy's hungry, give him food. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, 
you will heap burning coals on his head. I mean, that's what you want to do anyway, right? <laughs> you really wanted, you didn't want to feed him or give him water. You really wanted to throw him in the fire. So by giving him food when he's hungry and drink when he's thirsty, you heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. Right. See, you do what's right toward others. God will do what's right toward you. Um, I just believe that there is a reward from listening to to the right voices not all the negative but what God has to say and, and responding in the power of the Holy Spirit because it's, it, look it's, it's not this flesh that does the right thing no. it, it's not this man that does the right thing it, it's not even in our power most of the time to do the right thing when it comes to relationships with somebody who is antagonistic toward us, or who speaks against us, or who has negative things constantly to say about us, um, we really need the power of the Holy Spirit working through us. We need Jesus to live in us in a powerful way. Um, and you know, on Survivor, when the tribe speaks, what they do is they give their opinion of each other. You know, we're going to tell you all the dirt or tell you all the good things, or whatever, and then I'm going to vote. And when the tribe speaks, you're off the island. You can just go ahead and snuff your little torch out. It's over. Get off the island. And I just want to tell you this morning, don't ever give one person that power in your life. Never, ever. Unless you get to be on a reality show, because you could end up the winner. But in real life, with real relationships, when you're dealing with real issues and real people and real hurt and pain, do not give anybody the power to vote you off the island or to speak all the negativity in your life or to say you're not worth it or you can't stay or you can't accomplish whatever. Don't give them that power because Jesus lives in you and he's the one. It's yeah. the identity that he gives you. And if your identity is first in him, Paul said this, I can do all things. Through Christ who gives me the strength. Amen. And Romans 8.31 says, If God's for us, who can be against us? Exactly. And as long as God is on our side, all those other negative voices can go, just go away. Stop talking. Blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and really, you know, it's okay to delete people off your Facebook list or to delete your Facebook account. I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, Kristen's going to come and we're going to do a game that you're going to enjoy and then we're going to have a few minutes for questions and answers. Okay, Kristen's helping me. Hey, babe. Hey, when you bring it out, will you set it on this chair back right here? Thanks. <laughs> um, we're going to do our immunity challenge for this week and as you guys remember, Lisa and Amber and Reba won last week. So they all have immunity, so they are safe. Um, who was it? Zach and Darnell and Pastor Tony have lost. So next week they will be coming yes. back. <laughs> and they're really excited. <laughs> All right, so for today's challenge, um, I need somebody who wants to challenge Devin. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to I don't know, you still can. Come help me today. You're not alone, I promise. <laughs> Chris is helping too, he just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> okay, so the last verse that Pastor help. No, he's right here. The the last verse that Pastor Tony shared with us was if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat, right? So in keeping with um, the survivor challenges, you got it? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> You're challenging Devin today. So in keeping with Survivor for our immunity challenge, we are doing a food challenge. Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you all so you can see they're eating spiders. There's three rounds. Uh -uh. Spiders is their first round. Mm. Real spider? Uh, no. Oh, okay. mm. so you there are three rounds. Whoever wins the most rounds wins immunity, and I won't uh, torture you next week. Okay? What? There are three spiders on each of your plate. When I say go, the first person to finish their spiders wins this round. Are you ready? Spiders made of. I'll tell you when they're done. I'll tell you when they're done. Okay. Are you ready? Wow. Yeah. You 
have to eat them. Like you have to actually swallow them. One so the first person to actually, you can show yeah, them one at a time. however you want to do it. Um, I will just advise you that their bodies and their heads are made of different things. So it might help if you eat like all the heads first. I don't, oh, God. That's good enough. Uh, you know, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you can just, Fun. All right, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> No texture crunchy, problems, crunchy. guys. For everyone that's watching, the, um, are you done? Uh, oh, Patrick was first one. Oh, you're like, you're swallow. The bodies were, uh, bits <laughs> and the heads were raisins. Oh, wow. That was lame. Tough <laughs> challenge. Okay, hey, hey. I'll go first. find them some spiders. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh. So that was spiders. Our next oh. round. Want some water? <laughs> Our next round is mice. Mice? And one of your mouths is little ears fell off. Okay, now, can you show them? Oh, they're not as nasty as the ones you find like out like, uh, downtown. Okay, don't eat the, the tails. Those are not edible. Tails are not edible. I don't know, they look like chicken. Oh, but the whole mice is mouse. You could. Okay, are you ready? We have to eat to it. Two of these each. Two whole mouses. <laughs> Are they oh, Reese's Reese's Are you ready? On your mark, get set, and go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you left the inside of your mouth. What? <laughs> what? You saw the first thing. <laughs>
the battle. Yeah, join us. GG. You guys enjoyed the lunch. Wow. Wow is I just, I mean, I know it was food products, but... It wouldn't have been a problem. I just don't feel like eating lunch. <laughs> I could have won that if I didn't have a mouse on my face. <laughs> okay, so anybody have any questions for us today before we before we close? Any questions you have about listening to voices or hurt or so in everyday daily life we do come across the spiders, the mouses, and the nasty gummy worms daily. Yeah. And don't make that your regular diet. Don't make it your regular diet. I think that's one of the things. When somebody's hungry, I don't think that would even taste. Good. I have a question. Okay. If you have a family member and you've known how they are, and I haven't talked to this person in eight years, it's my uncle. I just know his personality and how he is, and I'm not hurt by what he is. I just accept who he is. Should I be the first one to make that move to contact him, or should I just let it just go? I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm indifferent to the situation, because that's just how he's been all my life. I've known him like that. I mean, part of me wants to reach out, but then part of me is like, why bother? <coughs> if he's not gonna, I know he's not going to put forth the effort. I'm sure he's going to. You mean to create a relationship? Yeah. Because like, he's 75 years old. I mean, he's the last of my immediate blood left. That's my mother's brother. So, I mean, I want to, but I don't. I, I think you have to decide <clears throat> if... It's like, do I want to open that door again, or do I want to... Is the result worth it? What's going to happen when you when you make that move? Is it is it for you or is it for him? Right? Are you opening this door to help yourself or to help him? Because either one is legitimate, right? Um, and it, there's nothing wrong with with that. If I mean, if he's 75, if you think you know he might have another year, he might have 20, 25 years right. left, whatever. Do you want to be part of that? If you want to be part of that, and he's not the kind of person who reaches out, then obviously you're going to have to be. He's more of a loner type where he's just wants to be left alone. Yeah. I mean, he's even got a vision with his own children and his own grandchildren, which is. Yeah. But if, but if you want there to you know there's probably not ever going to be a close relationship with you and him. It'll never be like it. It won't be like it was. Yeah. There's just been too much time to much stuff. It's not, not so much the hurt, but a lot of questioning how, what, the decisions I've made in my life. I mean, I'm not his own child, but do I want to open that door again and have the same questions asked eight years later? No, I don't. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Yeah, I want to get back in touch with him before he passes, but I don't know. It's like 50-50. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you have anything? I mean, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you should feel an obligation. I, I don't. Okay. I, but just part of me wants to just because I know it is. I mean, like seventy-five. I don't like that. Maybe five, ten years. Who knows? But. Well, maybe if there's a way you can do it without. I mean, like without overdoing it. You know, like reach out to him, mm -hmm. send a card, whatever. Um, write a letter, call on once. But not with the expectation that now I'm going to start doing this every week. Or right. Any more regular than that. Um, I mean, yeah, it hurts, but I mean, that's, he's, he's always been a loner. He's always just himself in the family. That's just how he's been. So I've accepted that, and do I want to open that door and have that hurt of him shutting me out again eight years from now or whatever? No, I don't. But I might do the letter, like you said, just a short note. But, but he doesn't. He doesn't put forth the effort to, to meet my, ex, not my, not my expectations, but he doesn't put forth the effort to contact me. He knows where I'm at, and I know where he's at, and, but he's always been like that. Well, you have to, if, if you want the relationship to be there, to whatever extent, mm -hmm. um, you control the door. Because not, 
him not responding isn't necessarily closing the door. True. It's just him. Yeah. That's the door's hanging open. He's sitting there. You know, if you want to come through it, come through it or not. Right. You know, I mean, that's just some people's personality. So, so you you control the door of the relationship. I'm 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 not going to I'm not going to respond to him, or I'm going to occasionally. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. You said what I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. You have a friend. Um, at the same, you you and a friend have another person that comes into your lives uh, at the same time. Um, and say one of the one of us, the friends together, discerns early on that maybe this person is not so and it, maybe it's because of different personalities or or whoever you got maybe the two friends are just two completely different people. But discerns early on that this person is gonna cause some pain later if the relationship continues on. Um, how would how would the friend of oh, the friend? Can you give them names? Because I'm all names. <laughs> all right, I, I got them. Okay. Got them. <laughs> There's Bob yes. and Joe are friends. Okay. And then Steve comes along. Steve comes along, <laughs> and Steve's not like Bob and Larry. That's Joe. Joe. <laughs> Joe. Bob and Joe. Bob and Larry, that's the best stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. So, anyways, let's say that I don't like names. Because now I can't remember who they are. The one friend, the one friend decides early on that this person's going to probably cause some pain later. For who? Cause pain for who? The tomato. <laughs> my friend. Okay. My friend. Okay. That, that works, yeah. So, how, how can we go about, because my friend may think that this other person is actually a friend when they're really just probably being used more or less to achieve their, or maybe even change my friend, or not them too. Well, you run the risk of your friend seeing your concern as jealousy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Or, or the new person. Well, that, that person probably won't be aware of it. But, so your friend's going to think, well, you're just a man. Or, I would say that the best thing to do in, in all relationships is to make sure that they're as strong as they can possibly be. Because this is part of what the Christianity is, was about relationships. Um, because that's what Christianity is, is relationship. I mean, we say this all the time. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, it's also about a relationship with other people. That's why Jesus created the church, to put us in relationship. And we should be in the strongest relationships anywhere. Your strongest connection should be with your Christian brothers and sisters because we get it. We see the same. We should see things the same way as far as relationships go. So, um, and whether these people are believers or not, it's in the mix. But doesn't really matter because if 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 you are the believer and neither one of those are or. Either way, it doesn't matter, but if you are, you should be working on your relationships to make sure that those are strong. So the person who was your friend first, if you keep building that relationship, you keep working to make that one strong, then the person is going to trust what you have to say. The person, I mean, you, you're, you should already be trustworthy to them. They should already be willing to listen to, to you. Um, and if the third person has come into the mix and is a troublemaker, I think that if your relationship is strong, then it's going to be as obvious to your friend, your first friend, as it is to you. I mean, once you start talking about it and bring it up and say, okay, look out for this. 
watch this person and see if this happens. You know, because because if there are red flags, um, first of all, I would say check your motives, make sure that they're pure, make sure that it's not or that it's not something else that's not right. Um, but if you, if your heart is pure in the in the process, then. Um, and you build a relationship with that person, then they trust you enough to listen to what you have to say. If you see a red flag, you have, I would say, a responsibility to make sure the other person has an opportunity to see it or help them see it in whatever way you can. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. I mean, yeah. and then what if they don't respond? <laughs> Amber, what if they don't respond? That's actually what I was going to chime in. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like if they don't respond, which many times it don't matter how close that friendship is, sometimes people are, get so blinded that they won't make the right decision as far as adjusting that. Um, so when they don't respond, you just kind of got to let them learn. Like we all, yeah, how we all have to do, but if it fails or if it, if it um, does exactly what you desire, then we still have that close friendship enough to pick them up when they when they hit that place of disappointment. Yeah. That's just my experience. Because if you see it, it gives you opportunity in the beginning to be prepared for whatever comes down the road. When it comes, you're prepared because you saw it whether the other person does or not.